talked about both bulls and squirrels but our, our squirrels go really to the basics and that uh, our AARs good good solid formats being able to share those and even a checklist our low budget KM initiatives so you can quickly give to folks so they they can execute become more efficient more effective those are squirrels. That's an excellent one. We all know the story of British Petroleum that claims to save $85 million a year just doing effective after action reviews. And it doesn't require multiple millions of dollars of computer systems to do that. It's just a discipline to, to follow a very proven technique that shows substantial results. And you can start in your department doing after action reviews tomorrow but make sure you collect the stories about how, the, how many good things derive from those after-action reviews that you've been putting to you. What's the last step in the after-action review? What did we learn and what would we do differently next time? And if you do it differently next time and show a benefit, that's what KM should be doing. Very good. Table number two. The best of that. Um, I suppose that a couple of favorites. Any people down there here? Uh, I suppose a couple of favorites, you know, one we talked about the SharePoint that was talked about earlier and that fact that it, uh, for a very low cost, could be implemented within a few hours um, across the organizational system and people could start using it to, and building, I guess, as it was described, um, you know, putting their information, their knowledge on that, uh, on that capability. Another one we talked about, it would be very low cost, would just be establishing uh, teams of people, not necessarily using IT to do it, but establishing teams that work together uh, for a common information, uh, knowledge sharing purpose. And then the, the other one was uh, is establishing a kind of an organizational uh, database of, of all of, of the personnel within the organization so that uh, you're able to keep track of, of what they do and, and, uh, and how you can uh, access uh, their, their uh, capabilities. So something have to do with more with their expertise than just their name and, uh, and it's rank and serial number. Right? Yes. And that would be a very inexpensive thing to do and most any company would have the ability from a software standpoint to support something like that. Right. Yeah. And you think you could show results in 90 days? Well, tangible, tangible <laughs> results. Remember we said 90 days. If you can't show results, 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 then find another squirrel. I'm not saying that's a bad squirrel. I'm just questioning whether you could document some results in nine days. You probably could, you may not. That's what you want to pay attention to, right? Right. Because the objective here is to change the hearts and minds of folks. And what changes the hearts and minds of folks? Results. Real, there you go. Results. That almost was a t-shirt just by itself. Yeah. <laughs> results, results, results. As well as some as well as some very powerful stories that influence people. I need to tell you a story about a lady once who was in class. And we were talking in class about how you could do no budget or squirrels. And I said, well, here's a squirrel for you. How about just improving the way you do meetings in your organization? Meetings, that's an interesting concept. What would it take to improve meetings? Get the little 1995 book that says meetings for dummies and do it, do it right. So there's a lady in the class who said, you know, you've really enthused me about this meetings thing. You know why you enthused me? Because I'm going to a meeting tonight in my church group. We have one once a quarter. It goes on for about four hours. It, it, it never gets anything accomplished. We walk out of the meeting blaspheming God because of how lousy these <laughs> meetings are. That's a joke. <laughs> Certain countries of the world, I say that. And, uh, enough said. Uh, so she said, tonight when I go to that church meeting, I'm going to raise my hand at 7.01 and I'm going to say, in class today, we're talking about moving into the knowledge age. And in the knowledge age, we focus on things that are knowledge intensive and meetings are one of them. And we do lousy meetings here at this church. And she did that. She came in the next day, her tail was wagging, her eyes were bright. She couldn't wait to tell the story. 
by golly, last night at 7.01, she raised her hand and said just about what I just said, and they shortened the meeting from four hours to two hours. The people went out of there with a sense of accomplishment because they really accomplished something, and you have made an, an, an unending change in that environment of that church. You're never going to go back to the old way of doing meetings once you've tasted a new way of doing meetings. That's what we talk about when we talk about changing the culture and the environment towards the knowledge age. You need to brand it. Remember one of my words up there was branding it. In other words, you need to say the reason we're doing this is because meetings are knowledge intensive and nowadays we pay attention to things that are knowledge intensive. So she had that experience. She will never go back to the information age now that she's tasted the knowledge age and I doubt that anybody in her church group would go back to the information age. That was a squirrel that took her five minutes to make a major change in the organization that cut two hours every quarter out of the lives of 20 or 30 people or gave it back to them that was being taken by the church meeting. <coughs> Table three. The lucky winner. <laughs> uh, we actually cheated too. We have uh, five different ideas that we talked about. Some of them are, are, have already been talked about, but they're a little more specific. One we talked about that I've actually done at my organization is a social club. It's really a it's a community of practice, but it's a specialized purpose where we get together monthly, and it's just driven based on the, the passion of what are, what are other people doing across Nantex. So it's a, a social club, basically. We also talked about um, social bookmarking. There's free software called Scuttle. You can install it in a day, and right away people can start sharing bookmarks and seeing, you know, tagging those bookmarks so you can find what other people are you know, seeing on the web. That's a free one. Brown bag lunches we talked about in class, so that was an easy one to bring up. <laughs> Uh, Media Wiki, we've also talked about tonight, that's free. You can have Enterprise Wiki set up, and I did it in Mantec in two days, so that was pretty quick. And they're um, free, too. Many of them are free. Free, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Media Wiki is free. Um, and then we talked about a specific, Jane brought up a uh, conference planning database. So it's almost a specific after action review we talked about, group number one. Uh, if you can somehow get together uh, a database or a SharePoint site where you're talking about all the conferences that our company is going to, Who's going to them? What are they doing? Give them some homework while they're there, and then when they come back, what to report on. So that was another. And share the, share the knowledge. Share the knowledge. Now, now, why would you say that? You know that if you go to that conference and you take notes, your <coughs> learning, comprehension, and retention is going to go up by 40%. It didn't cost your penny to force people to take notes. When they come back, you force them to report back. I don't mean their trip report, just get their reimbursement for their check for their travel expenses. You come, they come back and they have to report to the rest of the people in the department the kinds of things they learned at that conference.